Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of Mind Over Money, a show where we talk about ways on how meditation, yoga, and behavioral science can help you become a better and a more efficient trader, investor, as well as a better human being. Well, my name is Shadha Janand, and today we have with us a very special guest, uh, Ashish Shankar, who is an MD and CEO at Motila Loswal Private Wealth. Welcome to the show, Ashish. Uh, thanks, Shadij. It's a pleasure to be on your show today. And especially, uh, we're not going to be talking markets. It's going to be <laughs> mind over money. So, uh, yeah, I guess it'll be a fun uh, conversation. Thank you, Ashish. And yes, I'm also looking forward for this, uh, uh, you know, for the conversation. And, uh, you know, with the decades of experience, Ashish, uh, how do you keep yourself uh, mentally and uh, physically fit? Uh, look, uh, I've had various hacks over the years. Um, I used to be a national level table tennis player uh, during my college and school days. So that's a passion which has never left me. Uh, although I did uh, take a break in between uh, a few years where I didn't play. But then I got back about 12-13 uh, uh, years back and so I do enjoy a game of table tennis uh, every weekend. I mean Saturday, Sunday is normally reserved for table tennis. Uh, we play a couple of hours. Uh, so that obviously is very, very, very refreshing because it helps me connect back with the sport I love very much. Uh, other than that, Shitej, you know, uh, on a daily basis, I try and get uh, some physical activity for about 30 to 45 minutes, whether it's a walk uh, around the locality where I stay. I mean, I stay in Bandra West, so it's a beautiful okay. locality to walk. Uh, or if I'm traveling, then uh, wherever I'm staying, I try and get half an hour, 40 minutes in the gym or sometimes I go for a swim. Uh, I do enjoy cycling as well, but as you know, in Bombay, uh, cycling is possible only uh, four <laughs> months of the uh, year when, when the weather's nice in the mornings. So the whole idea is to get something on a on a regular basis. Of course, uh, table tennis is very special uh, uh, to me because I've grown up playing that sport. Absolutely. In fact, uh, table tennis is a great way uh, to get the hand-eye coordination, if I'm right, uh, on that part. And in fact, you played the nationals and represented Maharashtra and Bangalore University, if I'm not wrong. Tell us about that experience as well, Ashish. Well, uh, look, it was. Uh, um, uh, by chance that I started playing table tennis, um, okay. I, this was I think way back in 86 if I'm not mistaken when I was a kid, I was probably 10 years old okay. and I started playing in Chennai but fortunately for me, the person who was teaching me was a ex-India uh, player uh, and uh, he happens to be the coach for many many successful table tennis players. So, uh, I did well, very well in the first six months that I trained with him. In fact, uh, in the first six months itself, I went and won a school championship. So, that's the moment I, I and you know, even my coach realized that I have some talent for the game, <laughs> right? And then uh, they told my parents that I should take it up seriously. And that's how the journey started and uh, right. somehow, uh, and this is something that I want to mention, you know, a very interesting anecdote. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I trained with this coach for about a year. He insisted that I will not play a competitive tournament till he gives me an approval to do so. Because his thinking was, he said, Ashish, the, uh, the moment you start playing a competitive tournament, I, I want you to be a winner. I don't want you to be a participant, which is a very different thought process. Yeah, and that's when, you know, after six months, I went and quietly played a tournament, inter-school tournament without telling him and I won that tournament and he was very upset okay. uh, with me. <laughs> so, I first played a real competitive tournament state level, I think uh, after 10-11 months of training and I immediately got selected to play for the state team and from Ch uh, this was in Chennai and then from mm. Chennai I moved back to Pune. Mm. The first tournament I played in Pune, I played the semi-finals and I came in the top 4 ranking of the city. So, that is how the journey started. Well, that's also, uh, you know, the voice of an experienced guru, you could say that, uh, who knows how to nurture, uh, you know, the pupils or you could say, uh, uh, you know, the one who are training under him. Uh, so that's a very good sign. In fact, uh, and now uh, the talent is reflected somewhere. You're also finding your nation, uh, you know, managing money or managing wealth. So that is another 
uh, niche that you've carved out and you've become a guru for i'm sure a lot of people and uh, and a lot of your colleagues in that part so now you're playing that role which your uh, you know guru uh, played uh, you know a, a decade back or you could say that so uh, referring to the championships how many championships you won uh, uh, you know ashish could just quickly elaborate on that as well I mean, now that you ask me, it's difficult, uh, Shitesh. But I think uh, if I include my city, the the championships that I played in my city and state level, um, as well as as a national level, I mean, it would be in excess of forty, fifty tournaments, uh, or maybe okay. more. I am not uh, even school. I mean, I I don't. I think uh, uh, all my years in school, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, we won the championships. Right. Uh, I don't right. think we dropped a single one, and even when I was ranked, uh, so I was always ranked number one in the city, number one in the state. Yeah. Um, so there may be two, three championships I may have dropped in few years, but otherwise, I think I would be in excess of thirty tournaments that I would have won, uh, or maybe more, maybe forty plus during the course of my. I, I have not <laughs> counted it to be very honest. Now that you okay. uh, ask me, yeah, so many, many of them. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. In fact, that's also a huge feat uh, by any, um, you know, uh, if, if we look at it from any angle, that's that's a huge feat. So, how much time do you sort of take out for your fitness uh, in your daily routine? Yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, on a daily basis, I try and get half an hour, forty-five minutes. Okay. Uh, but invariably, you know, there are some days where. Uh, you need to hit work early or you know probably you had a late night and you know you're not able to put in that half an hour in the morning um, it gets made up in the weekends because weekend uh, i get couple of hours on saturday and sunday mm. uh, so so i would say on an average uh, 45 minutes a day but it may not necessarily translate into uh, activity uh, every day So that's how uh, you know I look at it, and then you know, like I said, I mix it up sometimes with cycling and uh, uh, swimming. Uh, I travel a lot, so when I'm traveling, I make it a point uh, to use the facilities at the hotel. So go go gymming in the morning. Okay. So yes, I think uh, uh, I try and keep up a regular regimen. And since we are on this topic, let me also tell you one more thing. Again, an anecdote which your viewers might find interesting. Uh, actually, there was a phase why when I stopped playing table tennis and mm. work was getting really hectic, I really ignored uh, my entire uh, fitness uh, okay. routine. Nice. And uh, I mean, you looking at me, you won't believe this, but I hit a hundred mm. kilos. Ah, okay. And I dropped about a year in a year and a half. I dropped to about seventy four, seventy five, and now I'm I'm stable at between seventy eight and eighty. uh but i had that full transformation from 100 i mean that's when i studied about you know the body the anatomy you know what kind of diet so i've done a lot of work around it and now i have you know decided that i should never reach a stage where <laughs> i need a uh you know a surgery or you know a, a no, surgical actually, kind yeah. of uh, move yeah well that'll be another story for another time i guess you know the transformation <laughs> you know from uh, 100 to 75 kg yeah uh So yes. you know we've talked about your love for table tennis so how did your uh, passion for uh, getting into equities develop so what was the trigger again interesting story and like they say that like they say you know i i like that uh, speech of steve jobs uh, yeah. which he delivered at stanford the really motivating speech there he says you know uh, in life everything comes together at the end joining the dots connecting the dots True. so i still remember uh, one of my uncles right from my mom's side is gujarati right so couple of my uncle one of my uncles was a stock broker and one of them was a voracious investor and a reader okay so even during my school and college days uh, mm. he you know in his house whenever i used to visit he used to have uh, heaps of annual reports so i used to ask him what are these books so he said these are annual reports of companies and he used to buy one share of com- of a company just to get the annual report right even if you buy one share in those days the company had to send you a physical annual report right so then i started asking him you know why do you get why do you have these annual reports then he started telling me that he invests in stock stocks and you know you have to analyze companies and uh, this was way back uh, i think must be early 90s when he spoke to me about warren buffett he said you know there's this very famous investor in the us yeah. who's made all his fortune by investing in good quality companies and i guess that was a seed 
the seed was sown in my mind and I, I got really excited and enamored with the idea of markets and companies and so whenever I would go and uh, go to visit him uh, he would keep talking about uh, stocks companies and so I think that really sowed the seeds for my passion uh, for equity markets and uh, I worked with a broker by the way during my graduation days to okay. earn my pocket money so again he made me do research on a few companies whilst i was working with him so i was very clear from college that this is the line i want to pursue right in fact uh, uh, you know you are at, uh, at the leadership role and uh, you know i would like to also uh, want to get your understanding as, as to what role does mental fitness play especially in the when someone is at leadership position Oh, uh, I think huge uh, and I keep telling people that the more pressure you have, the more mm. uh, you know demanding profession you are in, uh, uh, your body has to be extremely fit for you to be able to cope up, True. right? Yeah. So uh, your, your energy levels, your uh, uh, mental sharpness, uh, uh, if you want to be at the peak of your game when it comes to your work, you mm. have to have some uh, physical activity which kind of uh, lets your body remain in prime shape or at least you know you are fit uh, uh, i think it that that 45 minutes to one hour that you dedicate every day also is like a meditation you know a lot of people i mean we know the virtues of meditation right i i don't meditate okay. but for me playing table tennis is like meditation hmm. because that one and a half two hours that i get on weekends or even uh, when i walk around sometimes right uh, you are you are in that zone right mm. and and according to me that zone is very very it, it feels very much like meditation because you're not thinking about anything else you're just thinking about the next shot that you're going to play or you know you're just thinking about the game and you're thinking about now and present you're not thinking about what's happening in office or what you have to do the next day so i think uh, it's very important to have a you know regular fitness schedule if you want to be at the peak of your game uh, in office and in the mm. uh, corporate world otherwise you know you you lack energy and uh, people around you also see when you're in mm. leadership role people also uh, look up to you right Absolutely. so if you're slacking and you know if you're looking unfit and you know if you do not have energy it doesn't look great right uh, yeah. when you are uh, when you are when you are in a position where you're supposed to uh, show the way to uh, uh, your your team members and you know lead lead the way for them absolutely well on that uh, inspiring note uh, thank you so much uh, for your time ashish and that's all for now but do stay log on to eatingmarkets.com for more on news business and economy again thank you so much uh, for your time sir thanks shitish it was a fun conversation mm-hmm.